welcome back to my channel. So today's video is uh, the continuation, the third part of the casualty series, part three. Okay, one of the most important topic that is uh, trauma we have here. Okay, uh, under trauma we will be discussing about uh, firstly trauma with head injury, trauma without head injury. And then we have how to deal with an unconscious patient. And then we have the orthopedic bone assessment for a trauma case. These are the four things that we'll be learning today. So uh, I'll try my best to keep it crisp and short and as useful as possible. Okay, this is uh, one good video, something that I loved and enjoyed learning doing this. Okay, so uh, as an intern and uh, uh, what those things that I was supposed to do is the basic management, stabilize the patient and then, you know, segregate them to all the places possible okay wherever they need it okay so firstly when you get a trauma case with uh, some serious grievous head injury okay where uh, you see really good uh, casualties like that and i have seen many as such and uh, one such case where uh, where you get a patient with uh, some serious head injury and he might probably like 99% of the time he, he is unconscious and sometimes he might be conscious as well. But then uh, with a head injury case, you mostly get an unconscious patient where you have to first assess the size of bleeding. Check, check, check. Okay. Uh, different bleeding sites if uh, and point out if there are any active sites of bleeding. Okay. Active sites of bleeding. Okay. So if, if it is there, okay. Okay. A positive active bleeding you see and the first pressure bandage. If it doesn't control, give uh, tranexamic acid 1 gram, okay? 1 ampule of tranexamic acid give, has uh, 500 mg. So, you give 1 whole gram. That is 2 ampules of tranexamic acid, slow IV, okay? May, uh, as soon as he comes, first you have to check the vitals. And after that, and then check the active sites of bleeding. If possible, if positive, do the following that I told. And then uh, if there are no active sites of bleeding, go to the next step, okay? That is, uh, after checking vitals and uh, putting in an IV cannula and uh, assess the blood loss, ask if there's any blood loss. And uh, when, if the patient is unconscious, always check for pupillary reactions, okay? He, he'll be usually closing his eyes. And then take your together phone or put on the torch and then, you know, just move. Check if there are any light reactions, if he's responding to light and uh, either if it's sluggish or no response to light, that is very important, okay? And, you know, to assess the level of uh, brain trauma. Up after that, uh, Next thing you do is assess the GCS score. GCS score is very important and it will give you a lot of information provided the GCS score is less than 8. Immediately call anesthesia people. They have to come intubate him right away. Okay. Before intubation, you have to make sure that you after you immediately secure an IV line, immediately, immediately give IV on and citron to the patient because there are high, high chances of aspiration. Okay. And he might die. Okay, even after you intubate, there are so many, so many secretions inside. So whenever you get a patient in an unconscious state and a poor GCS score, always, always give IV on dance at Tron. Okay, because he's in an unconscious state and the tongue usually falls back and all the secretions, they actually enter the trachea and thereby leading to much more further complications leading to new aspiration pneumonia and all of that. So you need to avoid all of them. So Make sure you're cautious in doing that and uh, always give IV or Nemsetron as soon as possible. Okay, after that, place of Foley's and input output chart is very important. Okay, make sure that he doesn't have any pelvic injuries. Okay, in case you see, uh, you know, blood drop at the tip of uh, meatus, do not try to insert uh, Foley's. Okay. After Foley's, next, what you have to do is uh, you have to ask about the details of the accident in, you know, word to word you know ask the entire details about at what time it happened since how long it has been has there been any other treatment what was the mode of accident usually there were many cases which i've seen where the person is driving on the bike and he hits accidentally hits a buffalo in the midway of the road and then he falls off that is one of the most common cases that i've seen and uh, you know ask it detail you know every detail of the incident and at what place what time and uh, how it happened all of it and then any other treatment areas in the middle that is the ph that you usually go and uh, do not forget to give TT injections okay TT and tetanus immunoglobulin both of them are important okay one point here to be noted okay TT and TT immunoglobulin both are not to be given on the same side okay you, you give it on hand or your gluteus whatever it is do not give it on the same side because we do not uh, you know uh, it you know giving on the same side actually hampers the formation of antibody we need to give them a uh, active immunization where uh, you know there's a much better response so it's advisable to give you know, 
TT and TT immunoglobulin on two different sites. Uh, there were times where I thought, uh, you know, giving it on two different sites would actually, you know, give pain to patient on both the sites. So I used to give it on the same site. But do not do that. Do not do that. Give it on two different sites, okay? Next, um, after assessing GCS score, you have to you now write down the basic part of the case sheet. And then another important thing, ENT bleed, okay? Nose, ear, bleed. Immediately call the neurosurgeon, okay? They have to come and assess the patient. Very, very important, okay? ENT bleed, history of any seizures, you know, immediately after the accident, history of seizures, and then history of loss of consciousness, you know, after how long did he lose his consciousness or uh, uh, he he was conscious for some time and then lost his consciousness, all of that, very important, okay? You have to call, ring up the neurosurgeon. After that, after doing all of this, then... What do you have to do? You have to even call the orthopedic surgeon and then the general surgery person. Okay, general surgery person because he has to assess if there's any abdominal trauma. So general surgery for that. You have to get a G GS clearance and then uh, orthopedic. Okay, then you have the orthopedician to come and do any orthopedic assessment. You know, you know the the bone uh, fractures or anything. They have to you have to get that assessed before you send the case to a neurosurgery. Okay, uh, and then each of them come and then they write their notes. So when the anesthesia people come, so what are the things that you have to keep in hand ready before, you know, they start incubating? Okay, whenever you call the anesthesia person, GCS score less than 8. Remember, when you call them, you need to make sure that you have the Macintosh blade ready. Suction tube ready. The suction working. And then pulse oximeter compulsorily you need to have. You know, when the patient is under intubation, suction, uh, sorry, pulse oximeter is very important because time to time monitoring of oxygen stats is essential. Okay. And then you will start doing intubation only if the oxygen stats are greater than 90. SpO2 less than 90, do not intubate. Put an ambo bag and then give artificial respiration or connect the ambo bag to an oxygen and then, you know, do that. 3 3 to 1 compression and then uh, apart from that uh, you know the sister does all of the things that is needed that is the gauge piece arrangement and the ET tube okay uh, preferably a 9 or 10 size that is we use that is what we use uh, and uh, I told you foley's without foley's nothing IO chart is very important and then meanwhile um, other people will come and examine and uh, at the end of this video i will tell you an or the orthopedic assessment coming to rta without head injury okay the patient is conscious achcha hai he's responding everything well good all fine okay assess ent bleed and then tt do not forget tt and uh, you know replacement of food. Fluid levels is very important for them. So as you and uh, monitor the vitals you know whenever the patient comes first thing you have to do in casualty is vitals vitals everything vitals does everything okay and then uh, you have to send them for investigations and then, okay, for this RT, what are the investigations you send? That you need to do an ultrasound that is E-FAST, okay, all the six abdominal quadrants assessment, E-FAST assessment is very important for them. And then active immunization and all of it, GCS score as usual and that is it, okay. And uh, for an unconscious patient also, you need to assess it, do a GCS score, okay. Coming to the bone assessment, this is the only specimen I have got, but please don't laugh. This is the only thing that I've got. Okay, first I'll try it on me. Okay, first, what do you have? Okay, what does an orthopedician do under this bone assessment? Or if, they, if there's a delay, you could actually, you know, try this out for minor cases. Okay, uh, first, the frontals, check for the frontals. After you're done, then the zygomatic, okay, check for any zygomatic fractures, and then, you know, the jawline, entire jawline. Mentum, submentum, ask the patient to open them out. Okay? This, you're asking him to open them out in order to check the temporomandibular joint. Okay? Any jaw dislocation. Okay? Ah. Jaw dislocation. Done. So, frontals, zygomatic, that is your cheekbone, jawline, mentum, and ask him to open them out. Okay? And then, coming to the next part, that is the sternal notch, sternum, and then come to the actromium. Okay? And once you are palpating, you know, uh, palpating or examining the upper limbs, do not examine both the limbs together because when the person complains of pain, uh, you know, when you sh when you actually touch the injured part, he might shock, but you don't know from where the pain is coming, left or right. So you have to do only one side at a time. Okay. Uh, say, suppose this is humorous. Consider this to be humorous. Just do it like this, you know, opposite side. You know, just like this. If there is any fracture, you might... You know, clearly uh, hear that grating sound or, um, and uh, you can see the difference that the parts are moving in two different directions like that. After that, ribs, uh, okay, after humerus, then your radius and all now, 
just you know twist it like this the same way after that you have to examine each and every you know carp uh, carpal bones all the phalanges metacarpals everything you have to do on both sides once you're done ribs each and every rib okay for any coastal tenderness after that abdo pelvis abdomen obviously gs would do pelvis okay all the pelvic line pelvic area ear crest and everything anterior superior spine all of that once you're done with that uh, same for femur just like that and all um, tibia and then you know you know the better tarsus that is how you work so this is all you need to learn about trauma so what are the take home points so whenever trauma case always first vitals then the head injury part and ent bleed loss of consciousness seizure history very important and then you go with the given ct injections uh, assess gcs score okay any active sites of bleeding if yes tranexa pressure bandage that all of it and then give onnitrol if the gcs score is poor call anesthesia call general surgery call orthopedician call neuro surgery get everything cleared okay and then uh, that is it about the details and mlc register them under mlc that is important thing okay that's all about today and i hope you like this video if you like